Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So here we are in fall. Fall started a couple weeks ago with the fall solstice. And you know, it's that time of year where leaves are changing colors, leaves starting to fall off the trees, weather's getting cooler and more bearable and beautiful. Time of pumpkins and gourds and all that kind of thing, hay rides. But it is also the time of year when yellow jacket nests reach their full peak. And so today I just wanted to go over a few points with you about yellow jackets. So I have uh, actually two yellow jacket nests going on this year uh, at my place. And they are both unfortunately in my raised beds. One is right back here at the corner of one of my raised beds and the other one is down one of the sides. Now the good thing is, is that these areas of the raised beds, I don't have anything planted for fall, nothing's really gone on, so I can avoid these areas. Uh, but, number one thing I wanted to cover was kind of the yellow jacket colony and where they're building their nests. So, a yellow jacket colony is very similar to honeybees. Now I am a beekeeper, but I have no love for yellow jackets thanks to being stung multiple times in the past when I unfortunately ran over one of their nests with a lawnmower and then a second time when I was weed whacking out on our other property and hit a nest then uh, and it was not a not a good time there was a lot of flailing yelling running cursing all that sort of thing but so the yellow jacket colony is very similar to the honeybees they, it has a queen it's got drones and workers and all that sort of thing. Uh, with a queen in the spring, we'll generally, uh, you know, go and find a good nesting area and then lay probably about 25 eggs or so that will then hatch and become the initial worker bees that will then, or worker yellow jackets that will then start building out the nest and creating more room so that the queen can continue to lay eggs. Uh, you know, the drones, uh, which are unfertilized females, will take care of the young and do the foraging and all that sort of thing. The males, just like honeybees, are kind of good for nothing other than, mate, uh, other than mating. They're just sex toys, <laughs> basically. Their whole job is to go out uh, and hook up with other uh, potential queens mate with them and then they die and if they don't die after mating then they just kind of hang around until the end of the season when they just die off anyway so they don't really do a whole lot the girls do all the work in the yellow jacket colony with the foraging and taking care of the young so that's you know over the whole course of the season now it starts early in the spring and you might not really notice yet start really noticing the yellow jackets until probably late june or july as the nest has started to grow and build out. And by fall time, it's kind of reached its peak. Uh, the nest has grown to full size. Um, the, a lot of the males have gone out to mate and they're kind of getting ready for winter. So this is a time when they are the most aggressive also because there's not a whole lot of food for them as there is like during the summer where there's more uh, stuff for them to eat. So second thing is what do they eat? They unlike honeybees are more um, I guess uh, predator bugs. They will go and they eat things like aphids and caterpillars and flies and spiders and so they can be beneficial in that sense that they will actually kill and eat and feed their larva uh, many of the bad bugs that might affect your garden. The one maybe caveat to that is that yellow jackets can also carry fire blight which can be detrimental to your potatoes and tomatoes but they do kill a lot of the bad bugs. Now are they pollinators? Not really. That's not their function, that's not their main concern, is they're not worried about pollinating stuff. However if you have self-pollinating plants they may inadvertently help with pollination because they will land on these different blooms when they're hunting or maybe resting and hiding, shake those blooms around, which will cause them to pollen, move around, and then that will uh, 
pollinate your self-pollinating type plants. So yes, yellow jackets can be pollinators. Number three is the one good thing, even though they can be kind of jerks and sting you a lot if you happen to run into them, unfortunately, is that they're not really looking to sting you, for one. Uh, most stings happen when you are gardening or landscaping and accidentally mow or weed whack or disturb the nest in some way. Uh, but once like yellow jackets are out foraging, they're not looking to just come out and sting you for any, you know, off reason. They're busy looking for food and, and to come back to the nest. So it's more, if you're not disturbing the nest and there's this raw random yellow jacket out, it's more about like an accident. Like maybe, uh, you know, like today I'm wearing a hoodie if one bumped into you and got caught between like your hoodie and your neck, you'd probably get stung. But if you do get stung, get out of that area right away. The sting will put off pheromones and will attract other yellow jackets in the area, especially if you're close to the nest. If you happen to run over the nest with a lawnmower or a weed whacker and get stung, that's going to attract a lot more of them to head to your way to sting you to protect their nest. So run away and also try to get any of the ones off of you that you can. The other final good thing is that they only use their nest normally for one season. Starts in the spring, builds up kind of to a peak towards mid end of summer and into fall. And then by uh, going into winter, the males start dying off. Any uh, potential queens have left and gone to look for new areas to hibernate uh, so that they can make their own nest in the following year in a different spot. And kind of the nest that was in a specific spot that year goes away, whatever's left in there dies off, and the papery substance that they make their nest out of, which is made out of wood pulp and their saliva uh, just kind of disintegrates and becomes nothing again. So if you have a yellow jacket nest in your yard that's in an area that's uh, not going to bother you, leave it alone because by the following spring they're gone. They die, you know, they're, they've either moved out or died off over winter and they won't be there anymore. So with the nest that I've got going on in two of my beds, and since I'm not using these areas right now, by next spring when I'm ready to plant here, they'll be gone, moved out, and won't be a problem anymore. Now, a final bonus thing on yellow jacket information is that the Cherokee would make yellow jacket soup. Uh, this was not a staple of the Cherokee. Uh, it was a kind of more of a survival food if they had a you know bad season of hunting or foraging or planting they would actually go and forage and get yellow jacket nests yellow jacket soup is made out of the nest and the grubs in it and then it's cooked up and made into this soup chef barlow out of Charlotte, North Carolina is uh, working on, or I guess I'd say working, but he has been reviving some of these old recipes and actually serves it in his restaurant, I think in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Uh, there's uh, several links online. I'll post one below on the recipe uh, for a general yellow jacket soup, if it's something that you wanna try. The one thing I could not find was how they harvest them without getting stung to death. The one existing recipe that uh, is in an old cookbook of Cherokee recipes that was kind of put together just says that you harvest the nest in the early morning or in the later afternoon. Uh, and I'm currently reading a book called 13 Moons by uh, Charles Frazier, which is a, a novel, but it is, um, has a lot of the history of the time period of the, like in between the Revolutionary War and the Civil War, and talks about the Cherokee and, and whatnot, but they bring up 
the soup, the, the yellow jacket soup in the book as well. And the only thing that they say is that they, that Bear, the character who uh, made the soup, just had ways of getting the nest without getting stung very much, something along those lines. So I don't know if they use smoke because it's not like they um, had bee suits back then. So I don't know if they maybe smoked them out or just waited until it was mostly dark or super early before the bees really, or the yellow jackets really got going and just kind of dealt with a few stings while they <laughs> ripped it out of the ground. Uh, I'm not really sure. So, you know, look up some recipes and if you're brave enough and got a bee suit, maybe you could go harvest some yellow jacket soup or a yellow jacket's nest to make your own soup. And if not, if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, maybe you can go to the restaurant and check out Chef Barlow's recipe uh, for his yellow jacket soup. So there's a few tips about yellow jackets, their colonies, um, pollination or lack thereof and what they eat, and maybe even something that you can eat if you're brave enough. But whatever has gone on in your neck of the woods, I hope it's gone in and working out fantastic for you. And I thank you for stopping by again today and hanging out with me to, again today uh, to talk about yellow jackets. If you've had experiences with yellow jackets, if you've eaten the soup, if you've been stung or have other yellow jacket stories that you want to share, feel free to put your comments below. And I hope you'll give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. But we will see you again soon. Have a great day. Namaste.